Hello, I'm Ed Raby, otherwise known as the Rabbit Atheist, a former pastor, now turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video, so please feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like. Um, today I want to continue on uh, my series called The Tall Tale of Jesus. This is The Tall Tale of Jesus 2.2. Uh, I've subtitled this series, A Skeptic's Disharmony of the Gospels, and that's kind of where we are right now, working through the harmony of the Gospels. Uh, the previous part I talked about John's uh, talking about the pre-existence of Christ uh, in John chapter 1. I want to deal with the other parts, you know, the uh, and today we're going to talk about the lineage of Jesus Christ. Um, basically, there are two genealogies of Jesus Christ. One is found in Matthew uh, 1, 1 through 17. In fact, Matthew starts his gospel with this genealogy and then jumps into uh, the rest of the birth narrative. Uh, he puts a priority in putting this genealogy right up front uh, as if to prove something. Uh, Luke, on the other hand, waits until the story of uh, the birth narrative has taken place. And then after Jesus is born, then the genealogy is presented. Uh, it's probably a technical issue, uh, but Matthew is trying to prove that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Uh, if I take it that Matthew was the one who did it, I can see a disciple in him being very Jewish and trying to prove um, that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, one of the things I can note about Matthew is Matthew is the one that seems to run to the Old Testament prophecies the most to prove his point. Um, we're going to see, though, however, that many of the times that he does that, he's pay, playing very fast and loose with the prophecy and certainly yanking it completely out of context in most cases. But here in his genealogy, Matthew's genealogy traces Jesus's lineage from Adam uh, make sure that it makes a stop through Judah, and then make sure it stops again through David. Um, it is these uh, stops that are key and pivotal because they line up with the very prophecies that we talked about. Now, we need to understand something. Oh, see, Jesus fulfilled prophecy. I'd like to remind everybody that Matthew is writing after the fact, uh, and nearly 30 years after the fact. He can easily go back to the Old Testament, look at the life of Jesus, and quite frankly, make it fit. He obviously, uh, for instance, he makes the statement that there are a certain number of generations from this person to this person, and then there's a certain number of generations from this person to this person. One of the things you note if you compare this genealogy of Matthew to the Old Testament genealogies is that Matthew conveniently drops a few people to make that work. Um, so there's a lot of problems with that one. Uh, that genealogy is specifically through Joseph's line. Now that brings up another problem, which was also a problem in the early church, because there were two basic schools of thought. One, that Jesus had, and had Joseph as a biological father, and later on, the divine seed was placed into Jesus, and then he became the divine son of God. Um, the other view, based on some of the things that John said and so forth, becomes in the early church the idea that, no, Jesus didn't have an earthly father. And Matthew definitely takes that approach because he makes the statement later, which we'll talk about, that Joseph didn't know his wife until such time as after she had given birth to Jesus. So that's at least part of the story. Uh, we'll get to that part very, very quickly here shortly. But I want to talk about the genealogy in the sense that Joseph's descendancy then is through uh, through David and through Jodah, which conveniently fulfills prophecy, which is the whole reason for presenting the genealogy. If you're a person who is trying to prove that Jesus is the Messiah, it makes perfect sense uh, to do that. Um, this is one of the cases where I think it, it might be a little bit strong that maybe Matthew or some disciple did write it, or at least somebody with Jewish understanding of the Jew because it's uh, of the time, because they were definitely um, uh, looking forward to a Messiah or a Messianic figure. And Matthew really works hard right out the gate with the genealogy to prove that idea or prove that point. 
So we need to remember that that's what he is doing. But it also indicates an immediate bias in the sense that Matthew is trying to prove Jesus is something. He starts with the preconceived conclusion of what Jesus is, and then he tries to prove it. Um, that is not the way you usually do real good research. Uh, you might have an idea or a hypothesis, but you also create a way for that hypothesis to be disproven. There is no room in Matthew or later Luke or any of the Gospels for Jesus not to be the Son of God. It is their pre-drawn conclusion, and they work very hard to make their story fit. And that's exactly what we have. That's why this is a tall tale of Jesus, because there is no other verification. But let's going back to the Matthew genealogy. Is there any other genealogy that demonstrates this at all in any other piece of literature? No. Well, didn't you say there's another genealogy? Yes, but it's a genealogy of Jesus through Mary. So it doesn't help us with Joseph. The two or three witnesses thing fails, even though we have two genealogies, because one is tracing the lineage of Jesus through Joseph, and the other one is tracing the lineage of Jesus through Mary. So what we have is one witness presenting one genealogy that they heard about over here, over this way, and then we have the another genealogy over this way that's a completely different lineage through a different person. We don't have two genealogies of Jesus Christ per se. We have one genealogy from one side, one genealogy from another, no collaboration of either one. Uh, so we're really left to take this at their word. Now, the problem that gospel writers both have at this point is they're also getting everything second, third, fourth hand. I mean, the problem with a genealogy to begin with is that it's really one person's work. I know that this is the case because I've traced my own. There's a great deal of difficulty in tracing a genealogy, even with all the modern tools at our disposal. And, you know, I have some modern tools. I even pay a monthly fee to maintain, I maintain that. Uh, the reason I do that is because I realized that some of my, my, my initial genealogies seemed to go too quickly and too well. And I was suspicious of that. And it turned out to be right. Uh, because some of the, when the genetics test was finally taken, uh, there was definitely some discrepancies and where I was seeing some of my descendants come from based on, uh, what was said about the records and what the genetics actually was. Now, this, whole story becomes problematic because when you look at Jesus's genealogy, um, there's definitely some places there where there isn't pure Jewish blood. Uh, Rahab the harlot comes to mind. Uh, some of the other things in Jesus's lineage um, don't necessarily line up with what at the modern times we considered uh, pure blooded Jews. So, he, you know, it, it has that issue. So there is always questions. And the problem I've also learned with even legal and historical records is they don't always tell the proper story. So even if we could verify Jesus's genealogies, either one of them with records, we would still have the problem of whether the records are actually authentic or actually paint a real picture. Without a genetic sample from Jesus, we just don't have that, have that option. The fact of the matter is Jesus's genealogies stand alone, each one of them as one witness apiece without verification. The thing about the one through Mary that's probably significant is more significant, theologically speaking, because if you take the view that Joseph really isn't Jesus's father, then Mary's genealogy becomes important, except she's not a descendant uh, through Judah. Um, you know, it's more of that she is a descendant of uh, Levi. So it becomes a real interesting issue because she kind of throws a monkey wrench into the idea that somehow Jesus is, you know, a descendant of Judah, a descendant of uh, of David, because those are the prophetic utterance. No, I mean, she's... Uh, she is descendant of Joseph through the son of Levi. Okay, so when you really start to trace down her lineage, there's a lot of different names. Um, there is no commonality actually in all of this. 
uh, it really, you know, when you start going backwards, uh, it really gets complicated because some of these things become really, really weird. Uh, there's so many names that are the same in uh, Mary's genealogy, and none, the vast majority of them can't be verified. It just gets really weird. Both genealogies have just a massive amount of holes. They wouldn't even be remotely considered to be scientific genealogies today, and they certainly wouldn't uh, provide us any verification of who Jesus was and who he was a descendant of. That's the real problem here. I think the real problem with both of these is there's no historical authentication. They stand alone. There is no two or three witnesses. And I think they're really included more for anything than for theolog theology's sake. Uh, one is trying to prove the theology of the Messianic prophecies through Matthew, and the other one is trying to prove that Jesus is a biological descendant of different people, which it sometimes does, but not always. I don't know. Um, from a large standpoint, when I look at this, uh, the genealogies were never very helpful. I remember when I was a Christian and I'd read them, I said, this actually complicates things far more than it simplifies it. There is no other verification. I have to take this, that this is accurate based on one person's testimony. And I just, you know, it was never very helpful. Um, probably the only theological question I would address is, well, you know, we now have proof that Jesus was the descendant that he needed to be from both his father and mother, that legally he was a descendant uh, through Joseph and therefore, you know, entitled to all the provinces of being a Jew, uh, being Jewish, and from his mother, we have the same. Uh, I don't know. I, when I look at the genealogies in reference to the life of Christ, they don't really provide me anything. I mean, other than they would stand as great evidence if they could be verified of where Jesus's family was. But none of this can be verified. It would take an incredible amount of digging and going through things. Um, you, if you know, no Christian really wants to look at this issue because if we could trace, say, uh, a genetic lineage for Jesus Christ, that would indicate that he had children, which is not something that uh, most people want to admit, particularly the Catholic Church would have a hard time for that. Um, but one of the, the common problems that we'll deal with later is that if Jesus was genuinely called a rabbi, he would have had to have been married and he would have had to have uh, been thinking about having children. And that, of course, brings up a whole pack of theological worms. Uh, but we also have several other issues that will come up because one of the things about being a child of God back then as a child of Israel was that you were blessed with descendants. Jesus, by theology's sake, doesn't have any descendants. Now, later on, they will make the case that all of us that believe, all of us that believed in Jesus or believe in Jesus would be the descendants of God through adoption. And so, therefore, um, inheritors of the promise. It's interesting that the biblical writers take that tack after it becomes pretty clear that the church is going to be also Gentile. So these genealogies would have meant some great significance to the Jewish readers, but they sure as heck wouldn't have meant anything to the Gentile readers. So what? Um, and quite frankly, they still are kind of a so what, because none of them can be verified. Um, I just want to make it clear here that these genealogies don't really help us much. They can't be verified. They, they're standalone, each one of them on their own. Together, they basically constitute two separate genealogies that are very, very different. Now, you can make the case that one is Joseph and the other one is Mary. Fine, that's that's great. Uh, but the problem with that is, why do we need both of them? You know, why? You know, it seems to me the theology shouldn't be in this. But it seems to indicate that perhaps at the time of the writing of both these gospels, there was a theological controversy about who Jesus was which would kind of thrust these books into the second century where that theological controversy would have made more sense. But considering the fact that I'm going to accept as an axiom that the, the writers of the, the uh, Gospels were first century writers rather than second, I will let that 
role. And, uh, but it does, that's why some people say, yeah, but the theological schism that Matthew and Luke address about Jesus actually fits more the second century, not the first. And so that's kind of the way that the skeptic kind of goes forward. And it's the view that I would take. Um, I am not overly convinced anymore uh, myself that any of these things were written in the first century. I am very convinced that maybe they were written early second century after the fact, and that makes it even worse. But even if I don't make that assumption, these genealogies about Jesus were written 30 years after his death, leaving plenty of room uh, for oral tradition to sneak in, for whatever to sneak in. I mean, these genealogies were basically preserved by the Jews through oral tradition because basically a person was taught to recite their own personal genealogy from beginning to end. Well, what if that practice lapsed or what if somebody accidentally added the wrong name? So there's so many things that could happen here. And when they finally were written down, of course, there's still controversy about it because I'm sure that there are several people that are laying claim to the throne here. So that's kind of where I stand with these genealogies uh, from a life of Christ standpoint. Okay. Yeah. They both had, you know, if I were to take them as gospel, great. You know, both of them provide a lineage for Jesus. Did see either one of them prove the claims about Jesus. No, no, they don't. Uh, Matthews is designed to try to make that claim, but it doesn't really do it because all it really is, is a list of names and a possible descendancy without verification. Um, so that's kind of where we're going with that. Um, we're going to really start to get into the meat with the next part next week when we begin to talk about uh, the birth narrative, the birth of Jesus Christ and the birth of John the Baptist, uh, because this is where things really get interesting and where the, the concept of how many witnesses actually saw these really comes to light. I want to welcome you once again to my channel. Comments have a way of influencing Friday's videos. And I will respond to them when I can. Uh, you can also ask me a direct question at any time, and I will get back to it when I can, especially if you're looking to understand something. Well, what would you like to see me do? That's also a valid comment below as well. Uh, videos are uploaded Monday, Wednesday, and Friday-ish, and I usually drop about three-ish. I can't guarantee anything with uh, a floating work schedule, so I just kind of try to get things in, but you never know. I don't tolerate name calling in the comments section. You can demonstrate somebody's argues, argument is foolish. Just don't call them a fool. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and get your notifications. Uh, hopefully, I can one day uh, uh, convince you to be a rabid atheist like myself. In the meantime, this is Ed Raby, the Rabid Atheist, signing off and wishing you a good day.